What's up, guys? I was Virgil One here, and welcome back to another episode of the Three Way Dance Wrestling Podcast. And you can't have a three way dance unless there's three of us. So, joining me as always is Shelby, aka Shubs. Hello. Dang! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, people at home don't get that, but we do. <laughs> and uh, joining me as always is he goes on like a blister in the sun, Nick. Let me go on. There you go. What's up, everybody? There you go. All right, so we took the last week off because, uh, you know, once I said the word break, Shelby was just like a dog in heat, like, ah, you know. Um, <laughs> so we took last week off, uh, which was kind of good because I, I, I don't, we couldn't, we didn't have anything anyway, so um, might not have anything next week. Um, but we got a show for you here tonight. Of course, we're going to play our games. It came from eBay and uh, Three Word Dance. Oh, which, speaking of Three Word Dance, I found the score sheet. I just got to go back and listen to the episode and score everything. Um oh. Yeah. yeah, I was going to do that yesterday, but I just didn't want to. Um, well, I, I, that's that's fair enough reason. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, we're going to talk about AEW's recent pay per view uh, or premium live event, whatever they're calling them. Um, pay per Revolution. JR emphasized that on commentary was that it's pay per view. Pay per view, yeah. And um, possibly impromptu promo. I think we're just going to use the same list as last week because. That part I forgot. Uh, and before we get to all that, of course, we got to get to some news and let's talk about it here. And much like always, we breathe there, uh, fish swim in water, and Sonny was arrested again. <laughs> I don't even know what for. I just I just read now, Sonny arrested, and I'm just like, all right. And just, at okay. least you know. At least we're not reading a death report. Just silver <laughs> lining. She's not dead. Yes. I mean, she keeps going to prison. They're gonna kill her. I guess you're here again. You know. Well, hey, maybe maybe it's more like, oh, hey, maybe I'll get a crack this time. Yeah, maybe, but she keeps going to prison. She could be gone from this earth. Hey, speaking of gone, um, <laughs> oh boy, oh boy, <laughs> Chavo Guerrero uh, apparently had to take some time off so he could go film a uh, Young Rock. Or be like the coordinator or something for the show. And uh, they're like, yeah, you can come back when you're done. And when he called to say, hey, I'm back. They're, they're, they're fo- new phone. Who this? Um, <laughs> the <laughs> Tony Khan. JTG. Yeah, Tony Khan never. Yeah, Tony Khan pulled a JTG for a while there, man. Because uh, he didn't answer his phone. He didn't answer his text. Anything. It looks like Chavo Guerrero. Oh, sorry about that. Sorry, Roman Reigns is calling me. Well, apparently. Uh, but, um. Apparently, Chavo Guerrero gone from AEW, and um, yeah, uh, I mean, was he really doing anything that significant anyway? I was gonna say, I like Chavo, but yeah, exactly. Like, Andrade like kicked him to the curb after like three weeks, and that was that. There was no more Chavo and Chavito. I guess Tony Khan has said he owes him a phone call. Uh, I doubt that will happen, but you know. Tony's too busy with uh, fucking. Yeah, it looks like Tony Khan is not the uh, is not so perfect after all. You know, he needs to control his shit. Hey, speaking of control, um, there's <laughs> I just hear Shelby's increasing <laughs> with these fucking things. Um, I'm also pretty sure control, I know what you're gonna talk about. Yeah, uh, <laughs> formerly known as uh, Braun Strowman and EC3 are starting their own company wrestling company cyn aka control your narrative and they have uh they apparently have a tv deal all that good stuff <laughs> the main reason i'm bringing it up is because they're actually doing something unlike anybody i've ever seen before and that is if you go to one of their tapings and and pay for one of their vip seatings they will give you what was it three minutes they said or two minutes I'm two, not or sure. three, two or three minutes to yell at your least favorite wrestler, and they just have to sit there and take it. And one of the big signings for Control Your Narrative is Karrion Cross. and damn, I would go to that just so I can do it. We're accepting <laughs> donations so artists can go I know. and uh, yell oh, at God. Killer Cross. God, I would sit there for three minutes just tell him how much he fucking sucks. 
<laughs> He'll come back with a wig if you uh, pay for an extra three minutes and tell him how much he fucking sucks even twice. more. <laughs> like, could they say, like, you're going to sit, like, behind a curtain or something like that? I think that's what I read. Like, you're behind, like, glass or something. Like, can you imagine if, like, Karrion Cross sat there for three minutes and had to listen to somebody bitch about him about how much he sucks? Then the curtain closes and it rises again. It's just the same dude wearing a wig. <laughs> just, to, just to yell the same shit at him again hey, about how much control he your narrative, right? Yeah, so. you know, but like I, I just thought that was really unique that they're offering that kind of thing, and you don't have to use it for carrying crowd. I mean, hell, you could use it for Strowman if you really wanted to, but I mean, I would much rather watch a Braun Strowman or Adam Shear or Titan, whatever the fuck he's going by. Uh, match in a fucking carrying cross, man. I would sit there and just like you, you know, in Lucha Underground, you fucking suck there, you fucking white rabbit ball bastard. <laughs> Didn't you become a paramedic in TNA, you fucking bald bass and killer cr- Oh, God, I can't even get the word out. He's going to keep calling Look like a bald penis bastard. with legs, you bald <laughs> bastard. I can't even call him a bald bastard anymore, really, because he has hair now. Why the fuck did you grow hair, you bald yeah, why bastard? The fuck- <laughs> <laughs> why the fuck did you grow, uh, grow hair, you bald bastard? Huh? Your wife sells the same stuff she posts on Instagram on OnlyFans. Than, Fuck your you. wife makes more money than you. You realize that, right? That's why you're on food stamps. You bald bastard. <laughs> Isn't that the end of every sentence? You bald bastard. That's like my fucking. That's my period. <laughs> <laughs> Like that, 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 that like, bald bastard. Next thing, like that, 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 that bald bastard. Shave. Oh my god, bald bastard. <laughs> Put on that stupid helmet so we don't have to look at your stupid face, you bald bastard. Jesus Christ! Put on this oh, wait, stupid helmet even... so we don't have to see your stupid fucking hair. Then I can still you're think even... you're a bald bastard. You're not even good enough. The WWE would give you that helmet to keep you stupid bald bastard. <laughs> Oh my god, that'd be so great! And then he would just have to get up and fucking take his ball and go home and leave. Oh, hey, speaking did. of leaving, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> speaking of leaving, uh, Cesaro said, "Fuck it, I'm leaving. I'm done." <laughs> yeah, that's I, about it. I, I'm gonna head out. <laughs> yeah, he did. He pulled out like, right, "I'm gonna head out." It's just in like, Vince's I mean, office. Really? There's like the the dinosaur skeleton. Vince is like, "All right, pal." We're going to have you dressed up like an ice cream man. We're going to have you throw Sundays at Austin Theory. That's good shit. All right, I'm going to head out. All right, I'm going to head out. <laughs> you know. But yeah, Cesaro leaving. The- apparently, people were actually surprised by this decision. I'm just like, have you not seen how they used them in the last year? Yeah. yeah. I mean, how could you be surprised at anybody leaving there at this point? <sighs> well, I'm more surprised than people stay. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You know, Kevin Owens signs new contract. Really? Yeah, what? <laughs> Zane signs oh, it's worth a couple contract. million dollars. Oh, yeah. with an out clause, Kevin Owens did get that. Oh, oh, did he really? I think so. It's after two years. I think it's because it's a five-year deal. So I think after two years, he can. There's an out fuck clause. It. Oh, then that's what he's gonna do. Oh, it depends. Depends if. Little Tony and decides. He's gonna, he's, to gonna, he's gonna wait that two years and be like peace, and they're gonna be like, no, don't go. And then Kevin Owens is gonna be like, I'm gonna open up a can of whoop ass. Hey, speaking of can of whoop ass, <laughs> uh, Steve Austin apparently confirmed for WrestleMania 38 against uh, Kevin Owens, but I, I think I think we're getting bait and switched here. I don't well, think it's gonna be a proper match. Exactly, I think yeah. that's what's gonna be. Yeah. But it's not a match at all. It's the KO show. Exactly. Last night on Raw, KO challenged, or he called out Steve Austin to show up at the KO show mm-hmm. for the most stupendous edition of the KO show ever. So it'll be you mealy mouth like bastard. Yada, yeah. yada, yada, what, 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 here's a stunner, here's some beer, here's some more beer, another stunner, and some more beer, and that's it. That would be that's a right. nice, that's like, right. you know, moment be- between two intense matches. It's such yeah. a waste of beer. <laughs> well, <laughs> he's wasted a lot of beer in his life. 
This should just give give the sweet but do you think, but do, you, do you think that the KO show could be a setup for a match? Like maybe they're doing no. a KO show and they're just like, you know what? Fuck it, let's have a match. Like Rock and Rowan, uh, fucking thirty two last seven seconds. No, I don't think so. Nah, I don't know. It was just a theory. Hey, speaking of theory, uh, Pat McC- <laughs> Adrenaline, you thought you'd see Cody <laughs> Rhodes, but it's Austin Theory. <laughs> Pat McAfee, apparently going to be taking on Austin Theory at WrestleMania after reports of Vince McMahon having a match against Pat McAfee, which, oh boy, I'm sad we're missing that one. Oh my god, that was... Which, I'm sorry, look, listen, shit, yeah. if Vince wanted to have one more go at WrestleMania, fine, it's his company, do what the fuck you want, but like... Why? Let's say let's say it was set in stone that they were going to be like, all right, we're going to do Pat McAfee versus Vince McMahon. All right, what's Vince McMahon been doing for like the last four months? Where's going my... on about an egg. That and like you know hanging out with Austin Theory. So wouldn't the most logical choice to be have a match with Austin Theory? Like that'd be like, like I the thought final... you meant yeah. have a match with an egg. You know what I'm saying that would be like the final test for theory. Like, okay, he's done all this. No crap old star. It's versus Vince. Like he's done all this stuff to impress Vince and everything. Now he's got really impressed him. He's got to get in the ring with him and shit. Like, wouldn't that have been a, a more like, uh, what's the word I'm going for here? Like a finale to their little story than fucking McAfee and Vince. More I mean, it would have been a huge waste of Austin theory, Did but he? I suppose if you're looking at it that way. A waste of Austin Theory. What do you call him getting fucked up by Bork Laser at MSG? Ah, it's Brock Lesnar. Like, what are you going to do? He's oh, a fuck piece. off. He's an animal. I hope Brock loses at WrestleMania and that's that for a bit. Because fuck, man. Oh, if they're going to unify the titles, which doesn't really sound like they're going to for very long, then I think that's definitely the right call is having Roman go if over. If it doesn't yeah, sound wait, wait, wait. like they're going to for very long, you know it's going to end in a fucking no contest. That's what I was thinking. I was like, um, you know, they say it's going to be winner take all, but like if it ends in a double DQ, then nobody wins. Or if they both pass out because they both lock in their stupid submissions and neither of them tap and they're both like, and they both passed out on the mat. Paul Heyman's freaking out and be like, Oh, you gotta bring it up. What's I don't, the state of the titles? Find out tomorrow on Raw. I don't think they're gonna go for a non finish. I, I think there's gonna be a clear, decisive winner. I just think they're gonna give up on it like a month in and be like, well, Raw's got a champion again because we can't have Roman go to both shows for whatever reason. Oh, no, you know what they're going to do? Because money in the bank. They're going to do it until money in the bank. And whoever gets money in the bank is going to be like, nope, I only want that one. See, I heard reports It'll be that- fucking Braun Breaker that wins money in the bank because they'll fucking blow their load on him. And uh, oh, I heard, re- I heard reports you, that- Roman. They were uh, advertising Lashley versus Rollins versus Owens for the WWE Championship at the next pay-per-view. I guess WrestleMania Backlash. Yeah, but then who oh. wins that main event? The Triple Threat? The one I was talking about or the one at WrestleMania? The one at WrestleMania. Poof. There you go. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't really seem Hall of Fame worthy. Hey, yeah, speaking of Hall of Fame... Shit. <laughs> Vader, it's time. It's time. It's Vader time for the Hall of Fame. Vader going into the Hall of Fame announced today. Um, and I, I might be in the minority here, and I don't think a lot of people would get it, but you know who I think should induct him? Jim Cornette. Ethan Supley. Who? Why? He, because he was his quote unquote son on Boy Meets World. That's really obscure, though. It is, but, like, you know, like, I mean, they brought in Sylvester Stallone to induct fucking Hogan. They brought in William Shatner to induct goddamn Jerry Lawler. Why not, Ethan Supley? Well, if some of these Hall of Fame inductions are going to be digital, like they're saying, guaranteed Vader's going to be digital. Especially if they're if the rumor is true and they're actually going to induct Rick and Scott Steiner as the Steiner brothers. Because you know they're going to put Braun Breaker on TV so he can induct Uncle and Daddy Pump. 
caddy pump. <laughs> <laughs> I, just think, I just think that'd be a like, cool little thing if they had Ethan Supley induct him, you know? And stuff I was going to say, isn't Ethan Supley dead? But then I realized nope. he wasn't. No, he's not dead. But Vader, Hall of Fame. We, 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 all, we all good with Vader, Hall of Fame? Hell yeah. 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 Sid is rumored, too. Yeah, He's Sid right. is rumored, and so is Queen Charmel for some reason. Uh, I'm like, why? Fuck. <laughs> Yeah, because you can't question. put Elizabeth in, and you can't put Victoria or fucking you well, put Luna's Victoria in. in but... Luna's in the fucking legacy wing. Which yeah, that that still doesn't sit right with me. Fucking assholes. Oh. What about Paul McCano? Paul McCano, yeah. But like, yeah, if Ethan Supley um inducted Vader, I, man, I'd be like sold. Hey, speaking of sold, um, Ring of Honor. Apparently found a, bu- a buyer, and uh, Tony Khan actually delivered on a big announcement for once. Like he built up an announcement for like yes. weeks, and then the day of that he was going to announce this. Uh, apparently, the rumor I think I think AEW put this one out on purpose to throw us off, but the rumor was that they had a streaming deal with HBO Max, which I thought that's what the announcement was going to be. Was like they're going to have like their own streaming service. As soon as I heard Tony Khan was going to be live on Dynamite, I was like, he bought ROH. And then, yes, he announced that he bought Ring of Honor. But, like, he, here's my problem with it. Yeah, he's going to run Ring of Honor and stuff like that. What, what? I don't know who follows Impact. I read about it. But, like, what are they going to do with those guys now? They got this whole, like, Ring of Honor, quote-unquote, invasion going on over there. Yep. Ring of Honor is going to turn into Tony Khan's NXT. William Regal's going to head it up with probably Joe. And fucking, it's going to be all the guys that have competed on Ring of Honor. Mm. You'll have a few. You'll have a few that have been sprinkled. Like the Tony has been building up like a Lee Moriarty or a fucking... Jungle Boy or John Silver, or you'll pluck different guys from AEW to throw in there, and it's going to be basically his developmental, I think. I could see that. But, you know, fun fact about Ring of Honor, hopefully the senior fact of the week, but um, the founder of Ring of Honor is, uh, I've actually talked to the actual founder of Ring of Honor, and I didn't even know. Which one? The, the original one, Rob Feinstein. Oh, really? And here's why. Because, uh, you know, you guys know I used to, you know, collect a lot of autographs. I don't really collect that much anymore. Because uh, yeah, yeah. that shit got too toxic. Um, but uh, signed by Superstars, the one that I got banned from. Because I didn't like how they, I didn't yeah, like yeah. their admin. He's the owner of Signed by Superstars. Really? <laughs> So, and here's the PS to it. Apparently, Rob Feinstein uh, gave up his share. Well, he sold his share. I wouldn't say gave up. He sold his share of Ring of Honor because apparently he was found allegedly trying to solicit sex from young boys. What? Oh. Allegedly. Let me stress that. Yeah, allegedly. Yeah, yeah, allegedly. It's on the Ring of Honor page. Because, like, once I found that Rob found it, I was like, he found it? So I went and read about the history. And apparently he did it because he would sell videotapes of... ECW because he you know apparently he had a stake in ECW and then when ECW went under and WWE bought it well obviously he can't put that shit out now so he wanted a new wrestling company to put out tapes and DVDs and such like that so he founded Ring of Honor so after a couple of years and that allegation came out so that kind of got him out and he sold his share and that's what got him out so and that's when Silken and Sapolsky would have taken over then I suppose yeah but yeah, the original founder is is, is person who does RF video, uh, signed by superstars. Ban me from their page. I've even I've, I've fought with Rob Feinstein. How do you know? What do you know? Fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> it just came out of nowhere. Hey, Fuck maybe him. maybe if he ends up bit. in prison, that's what will be happening. Well, like I said, it's it's alleged. I don't think he was ever really found guilty nor innocent of either one. So. Well, if something happens and he is found guilty and then he ends up in prison, they'll be calling him Baby Boy Robbie in the showers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and that.
that was the news for this week there. I don't know, or two weeks, I should say. I thought there'd be more. Like, when I was, like, searching through, I was like, oh, man, there's going to be a shit ton to talk about. And I was like, no, 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 <laughs> no. All right, now we're going to move on to our games we like to play here. It came from eBay and the three-word dance here. So, uh, right Where now. Where do you find eBay? Huh? Where do you find eBay? Oh, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Uh, so right now, I believe Shelby is up by two, no three. He's up. He should be up by three, I think. Yeah, he's up by three. Yeah, I've been looking at it. Yeah, three. So violated. Let's find. Fuck you, Shelby. <laughs> you would. Hey, that depends. Okay. All right. Let's go with this one. If gas prices keep going up, somehow you got to get up north or as far north in your truck as possible. I know, right? Sure. I charge big money. Yeah. No. Wait. You charge big money. Yeah. Basically, you'll start hooking. There you go. You, you act it. like I already haven't, haven't already. I know. You're Ooh. hooking this weekend. Damn. Hell yeah. Which, hey, FYI, speaking of weekend, uh, March 25th is a Friday. One year anniversary of the Three Way Dance Wrestling Podcast. Holy shit. That's what well, it's, it's away. Yeah. But, All right, but so, the 52nd episode won't be until like. Yeah. It'll be a little April later. Or May. Because we've taken breaks and gotten sick and all this shit. When I'm Getting vacation. sick didn't stop it, though. Well, it, it did for, well, yeah, technically it did. <laughs> Um, all right, so the first item here, let's go with this one. This is a 1980s, didn't specify a year, 1980s WWF Roddy Piper sealed duffel bag. So this was like a WWF logo on it, and it was like all the, it was like a plaid. Uh, oh, that sounds dope. Is it with white, with the white? Or is there green in there too? No green. Oh, that's fucking dope. <laughs> So, Shelby, how much is the 1980s WWF Roddy Piper sealed duffel bag going for on eBay? 60 bucks. 60 bucks. And Nick? 40 bucks. 40 bucks. All right, Shelby. Because it is actually going for 177.50. Hmm. Okay. 177.50. That sounds so fucking cool. And here, you know what? I'll do this one for you guys because y'all are. It does, actually. I'll do this one for you guys because you're Canadian. This is a Playboy Canada. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Can- Canadian division of Playboy. Or, yeah, there you go. Playboy Canada 2007 calendar. And the reason why it's on here because it features one Maurice mm. as one mm. of the months. So, Nick, how much is the 2007 Playboy Canada calendar? I believe it's sealed, isn't it? No, it wasn't sealed. Sealed going for on eBay. Not sealed going for on eBay, sorry. Interesting. Maurice's Playboy shoot was nice. That was before she was even signed. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Thinking about it right now, it's nice. Uh, but uh, no. Um, wow, 2007. No May Young, though. Year. You fucking sick fuck. I mean, you're necrophilia. <laughs> I think in 2007, she was still alive. Yeah, she was actually. <laughs> Pretty sure she was in a battle royal that year. Gross. <laughs> Giggity. Looking nice in that battle royal too. Oh. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> um. Let's say like seventy-five. And Shelby. Seventy. You son of a bitch. Well, don't be too mad because you got that one. Oh, nice. damn. Because it is actually going for $99.97. Oh, damn. Yeah. So, you two are tied, so that means it comes down to the ass blast. I got to record a sound. I got to get a sound effect for that. <laughs> That's the most disgusting sounding shit ever. 
All right. So, Shelby, would you like post Taco Bell? Would you like a good old fashioned Hulk Hogan item? A a Mr. T item, hmm. or or just a w or a vintage WWF album, uh, a, item? A pity the fool who doesn't take the Mr. T item. Yeah, I was gonna say, let's go, Mr. Oh, T. Mr. T. All right. Yeah. This is a Mr. T signed Bunko Pop. Oh. Box. This is him in his like WrestleMania gear, so the red shirt. I think it says Hulkamania on his shirt, you know. Basically what he looked like at WrestleMania 1. You know, signed Funko Pop. Uh, so, and Mr. T does not do a lot of signings. Mm. Uh, that I can tell you. Because wrestling, you know, virtuals have been trying to get him to sign. And he he wants, like, ungodly amount of money to sign. Because so, Mr. T. Fun- yeah. So, uh, Shelby, how much is the signed Mr. T Funko oh, Pop going for on eBay? Oh God! I will tell you this right now, so so y'all won't overshoot it too much. It's under a thousand. Oh, seven fifty. Seven fifty. Okay, and Nick. I have this Funko Pop not signed. Uh, the common, well, actually, the pop itself is isn't worth very much when it comes to PPG value. If it's signatures on it and he doesn't do a lot of signings. Six fifty. Six fifty. A score sheet. Because with that, Nick, you just lost. Hell yeah. Son of a bitch. Because it is actually going for the price of seven hundred ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents. I mean, I, I almost could see that because they get kind of fucking absurdly priced as soon yeah. as they're signed. Like, the, the the basic one is only $14. It might have fluctuated since the last time I looked, but it's only 14 Possibly. All right, now it's time to move on to our other game we like to play here, the three-word dance, where we give each other three words that... Um, could relate to a wrestler, and we have to figure out who it is. So, the first one here. Um, let's go with. Okay, let's go with this. All right, your three words are gold, as in the color gold. You know, flames, spin. MVP? No. Kane. No. John Cena. No. Ted DiBiase Jr. No. No. What? <laughs> Gold. <laughs> flames. Spin. Stardust. No. Are you Booker Gold T. Dust. Booker T. There it yes. Is. Can you dig it, son? Gold, because Hulk Hogan. We want the gold, sucker. We coming, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, flames, because he had the flames on his tights. And spin, spin a ring. Right on. Good start. All right. Next three words are Johnny, Dungeon, Dream. Johnny Dungeon and Dream. Mm-hmm. Is it Jim Neidhart? Nope. Hmm. Jim. Um, Tyson Kidd? Nope. Chris Benoit? Nope. Ted DiBiase. Nope. Ted DiBiase. Joey Mercury. Nope, nope. Johnny Dungeon. Daniel Benoit. No. 
Owen Hart. No. Bruce Hart. No. Keith Sue Hart. Hart. Uh, no, no. Damn. Brad Hart. No. If it would have been Bret Hart and we guessed all the other hearts before that, we should be ashamed of ourselves. <laughs> Natalia. <laughs> no. <laughs> You're on the right track, though. Steve Blackman. Nope. British Ken Bulldog. Shamrock. Nope. Nope. Christian. Nope. Edge. Nope. Chris Jericho? Nope. Johnny Stambold. Nope. Had to get that one in there because it's like Johnny. Oh. Mm, no. I don't have the slightest fucking idea. Davy <laughs> Boy Smith Jr. No. Brian Pillman. No. Brian Pillman Jr. No. Not straight. Dynamite Kid? Nope. Hint. Dustin Rhodes? No. Mm. Hint being Hammer. Greg Valentine. Greg Valentine is Son correct. Of a bitch. <laughs> what was Johnny though? Johnny Valentine was his dad. He was also a wrestler. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cause I, uh, man, because I was thinking, I was like, there's no way it's Greg. That's why I said Jim Neidhart, because I was like, Dream, maybe he did something with Greg Valentine. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. That's yeah, why yeah. I was just like, oh, okay, Jim Neidhart. All right. Yeah. Okay. There's three words. Hawk. Hawk? Hawk. Okay. Funk. Cold. Paul Ellering. No. Hawk. Funk. Oh, Two Cold Scorpio. Yeah. So his hatred for Rogue Warrior Hawk at Flash <laughs> Funk and do cold Scorpio. Um, all right, my turn here. Uh, I gotta start writing some more down. I'm running out here. Let's do okay. This one might be hard. Giggity. Giggity. Yeah. Um, three words are skirt, hefty. Lithium. Nikki James. Yeah, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> skirt because she used to wear a skirt ring gear. Um, hefty because of the hefty bag. And lithium because Jim Ross. Get lithium! You know. <laughs> <laughs> Fruity delicious. All right. Next three words. Nature. Inaugural. Nope. Buddy Strut. Rose. Uh, Buddy Rogers. No. Correct, oh, Buddy Rogers. Fuck, <laughs> Buddy Rose. <laughs> oh, I was on the right track, though. I had you it. were. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> what, what was the third word? Uh, the third word was strut. Uh, woo. Yeah, woo. Right, so I don't think next. he did the woo. I think that was the only thing Ric Flair didn't steal from him. Oh, <laughs> All right, so next three words. Brother, green, red. Jeff Hardy? No. Gangrel? No. I write these down now, and then I just look at the initials, and I try and... <laughs> <laughs> That's what I kept thinking with the last one. I was like, JDD, JDD. Who would be JDD? <laughs> if he's fucking with me, who's JDD? Who is he? <laughs> um, Brother Green. Oh, Red. Kane. No. Oh. Undertaker? No. Okay. Chavo Guerrero. No. He's not a brother. He's a nephew. Nephew, yeah. Eddie well, Guerrero. I suppose if you no, <laughs> if you say Chavo Guerrero, it could mean uh, Chavo, Chavo Guerrero. Senior. Yeah. So Hector Guerrero. No. 
It's not a Guerrero. <laughs> no, it's not Dominic Guerrero either. Dominic Guerrero. <laughs> green and red. All right, I don't have a clue. Hint. Spider. Oh, that didn't help. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. This is a good one. Oh, brother green. Is it fucking road warrior animal? No. Oh, okay. Spike Dudley. No. Baba Dudley. No, it's Baba not a Dudley. Dudley. <laughs> I was like, oh god, here we go. Before you fucking say dances with Dudley and Big Dick. Sign Dudley. guy Dudley. James Dudley. <laughs> Who was he? Oh, even, is, like... it, is it Tajiri? No. Oh. I was thinking green or red mist, spider, the tarantula. I didn't know where brother would come in, but. I don't think he ever called Regal Brothers. So it... mm. Hey, you don't speak Japanese. <laughs> oh. I don't. Uh, fuck. Brother, green, red, spider. I got Road Warrior Animal in the brain now, and it's not him. I don't know. Shall we? Oh, I have a feeling I'm going to hate this, but I got no idea, buddy. Is it Fabulous Mula? No. May uh, Young. No. <laughs> so, Green Red Brother with your hint being Spider Eric Rowan slash Redbeard. So green for his uh coveralls yep. of the Wyatt family. Red because mm -hmm. Redbeard. Brother because the Bludgeon Brothers yep. and Spider because his goofy little yep. pet spider on it. Oh uh, fuck, I forgot about that stupid thing. You were supposed to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Alright, uh, three words are window. Cut. Seven. Dustin no. Rhodes. No. Gold dust. No. no. What was the Name last word, seven, please? <laughs> okay, three words again are window. Cut. C U T. Uh. Shop. S H O P. Marge Janetti. No. Shawn Michaels. No, yeah, British Beefcake. Fuck. Ah. Yeah, yeah. Window because you know the window in the in the barber shop and then cut you know strutting and cutting baby. Hmm. Yeah. You could have used booty zodiac fucking brother and fuck All right. guy. Next three words are the uh, last three for me as well. Uh, <laughs> amateur. This is Brock actually Lesner. two words, but I'm using it as one. Black belt and president. Kurt Angle. Nope. Jesse Ventura. Nope. Eric Bischoff. Nope. President. Say it again, Trump. president. Uh, black belt and amateur. It's not Donald Trump. Who? It's not Donald Trump. No. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, is it Jack Tunney? Nope. Danny Davis. Nope. I think it means black belt as in karate, not somebody who wore black belts. And, hey, it doesn't mean Danny Davis didn't have black belt in karate. I mean, he probably didn't, but you know. <laughs> Jim Cornette? Nope. Bill Watts? Nope. Vince McMahon? Nope. Gorilla Monsoon? Senior? Nope. Nope. Damn. Blue Fez? Nope. Carlos Colon? Nope. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Say him again. Amateur. Uh -huh. Black belt. Uh -huh. President. I'm only linking this to president, but is it Billy Corgan? Nope. Okay. 
Jeff Jarrett. Nope. Fuck. What? <laughs> Jerry Waller? Nope. Did I say that already? I don't think he did, but no. No. One of the Von Erics. No. Damn. The Mike fake Von, Von Eric. <gasps> no. Mike Von Eric. No. That is the fake Von Eric, Jack Cass. <laughs> no, Mike was the real one. I thought, he, but I said any of the Von Erics. Yeah, yeah. And then you said the. Yeah, fake but you know Von how Eric. Shelby is. You can't do like the any of the, and then you know you gotta name them. <laughs> yeah, well, sometimes. <laughs> If I get tired of hearing it, I'm not going to name Fred's Carey, Kevin Lacey, fucking No, 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 no. (laughs) President Stu Hart. Is it Jim Hurd? Nope. Oh, Pizza Hut loving bastard. Kevin Dunn. Nope. He's not a president. President of production. Okay, you're just making that up now. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'm also pretty sure he's not an amateur wrestler either. Tony Khan? No, no. that doesn't make sense. Uh, Antonio hey, Inoki? No. And, and for everybody. John Laurinaitis? No. Uh, John Laurinaitis. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Say the words again. Uh, amateur, black belt, president, and your hint being for everybody. Right, so APB doesn't match anybody. (laughs) (laughs) FE doesn't really match anybody. I like how that's where you go now. That's fucking great. I know, yeah. I gotta make now. Because I'm just like, all right. That's why I say name, read them again, so I could just write down the first letters. <laughs> Amateur, president, everybody. Oh my God! Is it Roddy Piper? It is Roddy Piper. What? <laughs> everybody, <laughs> get it, get it. <laughs> So he was actually trained in amateur wrestling. He also had his black belt given to him by Gene uh, LaBelle, I think his name is. He was like an old school promoter. And uh, he was an amateur wrestler at one point, too. And, of course, he was the president of the WWF for a little while. Yeah, fuck. Fuck, everybody! That's what what did it for me. I was like, wait a minute. (laughs) I was trying to kind of give it away when I said it. It did not have a thing. I yeah. Up. <laughs> like, uh, uh, oh, yeah, I got that one. Uh, All right. So, my last three words. Toy. North. Ego. Ethan Page. Damn. Fuck, I thought that would be a hard one. Toy, because he's a... Toy Collector North because the North team with Josh Alexander and fucking all ego, Ethan Page. The fucking Josh Alexander's back in Impact. Yep. We forgot that on the name list. Okay, hold on. We got a bonus one here. Uh All right, your three words are undisputed. Kevin Grimes. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> you can have you it. get to the other words. <laughs> they were what are the other words? Undisputed, money, and night. Uh-huh. Ah. Uh. Fuck. <laughs> All right. All right, so that was three-word dance, and uh, let's see what the current score is, just for shiggles. It is 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 44 for me. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 48 for Nick. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 39 for Shelby. And 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 37 for no contest. Suck it, no contest. I'm the man. He's a man. Right. That was Such our man. Be humble there, buddy. I know, right? And fuck <laughs> you. <laughs> uh, 
right. Yeah, that was fair. our. Um... Be humble, your buddy. <laughs> I'm a four pointer, and you, you came for me, man. Hey, 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 hey! I didn't, I didn't say that. You, you mentioned it. You're the one who brought it up. Oh yeah, yeah. Fuck oh, you. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right, that was uh, it. Came from eBay and Three Word Dance. Now we're going to talk about AEW's Revolution that happened on Sunday. But before we get to that, we got to give a shout out to one of our sponsors, that being HardToFindTV.com, where you can go on over and find that hard to find classic TV show, and they'll put it on DVD and or Blu-ray for you. Even put some subtitles on there. They'll do it for a reasonable price, and if that price just isn't reasonable enough. Just use checkout code ARTIST, A-R-T-I-S-T, at checkout and save yourself 15% on your purchase. Uh, at the moment, they are only accepting Amazon Pay, which kind of sounds like a down note, but Amazon Pay is a nice, fun, easy way to pay for your items. Uh, it's fantastic. I've I've even used Amazon Pay before. It's it's not that bad. Um, people act like it's a, it's a, you know, end of the world type of thing. Oh, my God, I don't take Amazon Pay. It's not that bad. Um also, uh, if you look through all the thousands of titles that they have on hardtofindtv.com and you can't find something that you want, email them. They're more than happy to take your request. And if they can find it, they will slap it on there for that reasonable price with my checkout code artist, saving 15%. And as I like to say, if they don't have it, you don't need it. All right. So let's get into Revolution. Um, their first, like, fucking four-hour show. <laughs> Usually they're like shit's done in like two hours and fifty five or some shit. Just went on this this show dragged on. I'm sorry, and it did, and I'll get more into it later. But right off the bat, Judas, uh, by Fozzie by Chris Jericho. Well, technically, yeah. And like first question I have is like because you know they're showing everybody singing that in the crowd. Does Brock Lesnar guy even? Well, uh, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Does Brock Lesnar guy even still go to the WWE shows? Yeah, that guy just—I I always see him on AEW. <laughs> then. The guy with the green shirt was there too. Oh, was he? You know, the green smile, the shirt, and the stupid little hat. <laughs> yeah, he was and in then, the same spot too. And Chris Jericho's taking on Eddie Kingston, and I'm sorry, but when Eddie Kingston walked out of that fucking tunnel, it's like—it's like, have you ever seen somebody? Who's like uh, a little like, like, lumbered really out of there? Sh- like somebody who's like really short, like just really mad, and they start walking towards you, and it's just like um, comical. Um, that's that's um, how it looked when Eddie Kingston walking out. Really? See, I thought he had his game face on. I mean, he See, had his he game had face, his on, game but face fucking, on. He was like one like one pose away from doing that old Santino walk. To oh, me, God. he looked. I don't know. To me, he looked a bit too tubby. And was watching. Yes. Oh, he yes. should have a yes. I'm like, I'm looking at Jericho. I'm like, oh, six pack. They are Jericho. under the uh, they are yeah. under the Warner Brothers umbrella. So like when he came out, it could have been like oompa loompa doopa dee doo. Um, and earlier, match for you to lose. Earlier, I said that uh, you know. We breathe air, fish swim in water, Sonny gets arrested. Well, let's add on to that. Fish uh, fish swim in water, we breathe air, Sonny gets arrested, and uh, Eddie Kingston does machine gun chops. Oh, my God. Fuck. God, those things look fucking terrible. Damn. Uh, Jericho hit a nice um, Frankensteiner. I thought that was pretty cool. <clears throat> uh, oh, yeah, and I wrote this down because, uh, you know, DraftKings was part of um, AEW Revolution. Like, I bring this up because... When Snoop Dogg appeared on AEW, WWE was just like, hey, you're a WWE Hall of Famer. You're supposed to be with us. Like, why are you going on? They're like, they reprimanded him for it. When Vicky Guerrero showed up in AEW, they're like, hey, you're not allowed to have any WWE guests on your podcast and shit anymore. You think WWE called DraftKings? It was just like, hey. <laughs> DraftKings gave him the finger and kept I going. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> I you know? would not be surprised one bit. Like, you think WWE called DraftKings like, hey, you're not supposed to be with them. Um, Nice to see the lion salt again. I think it's been a while since he whipped out the lion salt. He's getting too old. Yeah. Um, Probably can't take that bump as much anymore. And I will say, you know, I usually don't really pay much attention to her, but Aubrey was looking good. Yeah. Her, her makeup had her looking like fucking Mamie Jabobek. Mimi Jabobek? You mean Mimi Bobek? 
I thought it was Joe Blowbag. No. Mimi Bobeck. Mimi, Mimi Bobeck. That's what it had her looking like. I didn't think she was looking that I don't know. Good. I, thought she, I thought she was looking good. Um, and Jim, I was, even though there was a little fuckery, you know, like he hit the elbow and then, you know, the exposed turnbuckle pad, which I'll be honest, I didn't see that coming. I thought it was going to be some other kind of Tom Fullery with the term, with the exposed turnbuckle. But other than that, Jericho putting over Eddie Kingston clean. Mm-hmm. That surprised me. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. No, that was cool. Um, uh, Jericho I thought actually it was a looked really match. good too. I like, Jericho decent... looked like he was in shape for this match. Yeah. Too bad Eddie Kingston. Yeah, I know. He, he's um, never been in great shape, but like, fuck, he needs to hit the gym a little bit, I think. You know, at least go for a run every now and then. Put down go the for a run and not a ho-ho. Yeah. And I'm not... I'm not real big on Eddie Kingston, you know. I think no. we've, we've established that. But, yeah. I mean, these two put on a decent match. I gave it two and a half. Yeah. I gave it a solid three. But I um, like Eddie Kingston, too, even though he's looking too fat and slobby. <clears throat> oh, yeah. And before we get further into this, I want to mention that there's probably one match that will surprise all that was my favorite match and one that will surprise all that was my least favorite. And I'll tell you right now, this is neither one of them. Decent start, there. right winner. Honestly, uh, this is the best Jericho's looked in a while, physically and in the ring. Uh, three mm-hmm. out of five. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I thought it was all right. All right. Next up, we have the AEW World Tag Team Championships on the line. Red Dragon, which, goddamn, I love fucking Red Dragon, man. Mm, I, I yeah. think Kyle O'Reilly is a bigger star as a tag team star than he could have been as a, as a single star. I'm sorry. Um, taking on the Young Bucks and taking on Jurassic Express. Um, this is a little nitpicky thing, but it was a triple threat match for the tag title. Shouldn't one from each team start the match? That's what I was wondering. I kind of liked it the way they did it. Okay. I liked that, but it just seemed a little bit too much it like makes... they were trying to set up a Buck versus Red Dragon or, you know, that, that sort of thing. I like, guess in that, that aspect, have... and then, yeah, that's how they had to go. But, like, like, looking at it, I'm just like, shouldn't one from each team be in the match? Yeah, but that's what I mean. That's how it should have been. Yeah, but they made it work because it was more or less a handicap match. Yeah, you know, um, nice arm drag by uh, Jungle Boy. Uh, oh no, I'm sorry, I skipped one. Nice arm drag into an arm bar by Kyle O'Reilly. Like Jungle Boy went for the arm bar and he turned or arm drag and turned it into an arm bar. I thought that was pretty sweet. Uh, nice arm drag by Jungle Boy onto the Bucks. Like, he had, like, this succession of, like, arm bars on them, which I thought were pretty cool. Or arm drags. Shit, I'm getting confused. <laughs> um, nice dive by Jungle Boy. Uh, Bucks had a nice flipping senton. I loved, I fucking loved, uh, Jungle Boy, like, went on this, like, I think he, like, took out all four guys. And then, like, he went for the hot tag, the Luchasaurus, and they pulled Luchasaurus down, and he missed the hot tag. Unbelievable. I fucking love that. Um, uh, what else here? Well, yeah, great hot tag miss spot. I uh, like the bulldog dropkick combo. That was pretty cool. Uh, then finally, you know, Luchasaurus gets the hot tag sequence in. That was pretty good. Where he elbows and clotheslines everybody. That was good. Um... Mm-hmm. Uh, Nick Jackson blocking a choke slam into a destroyer. I thought that was pretty cool. And yeah, then, Nick Jackson destroyer. Damn, I have written down. That was fucking good. Yeah. Uh, love the kip up choke choke slam. Like Luchasaurus goozled fucking both of them, then kip up and then fucking choke slam them. Fucking awesome. Fucking mm. amazing. Um, love the triple down where they they all hit a triple close on each other and all went down you usually see double downs you don't see a triple down that much i thought that was pretty cool uh good ddt suplex combo that shooting star press break was great then it was followed by a 450 break which is good good false finish um one of my favorite things that nobody's really mentioned like uh kyle o'reilly held uh, jungle boy in a tombstone position, which is like the first of like 57 tombstones you'll see tonight. Yeah. Um, oh, fuck. But the, the young bucks kicked out uh, uh, Kyle O'Reilly's knees to make him do the tombstone. I thought that was fucking sweet. Mm-hmm. Um, nice Rana into a suplex. Fucking love this match. Uh, this is easily my favorite match of the night. Four and a half. I give it four. It was, it, that was, it was great. Oh wait, what's that I hear? I hear what's that I hear? I hear seething, Shelby. (laughs) I'm honestly not surprised that this was your match of the night. 
Mm. Uh, it's just, it's chaos. It, anytime you have that many tag teams in one match, it just turns into pure chaos. I didn't care for the kick with the tombstone. It just, it was fucking. Oh, that was so dope. <sighs> it's just. Like he was and, standing there. Then they super kicked the knees and make him fall and hit the tombstone. That was so dope, man. Uh, it's just, this isn't my style of match. I don't like, there's too many guys in the ring, too much going on. And none of it really makes sense. There's not a lot of working. It's just chaos and moves but they still uh, kept track of who's legal they did but again it's it's a three-way tag match like it's just it's not really my thing um at least the bucks didn't win one out of five I, what out of, what what yeah, yeah. What? i didn't like it i didn't like it i can't say anything because, i can't really say much because there's probably two matches later that like i'm gonna get shit for for not really liking <laughs> I think uh, I can already guess one of them, but <laughs> probably. But yeah, I was fucking. Oh god, I was like so into this match. I had to keep reminding myself to take some notes here and shit like that. There was one match I didn't even write any fucking notes for. I just wrote a rating. That's how like fucking bored I was by it. Um, yeah, I fucking love this match, man. Like they, they did. I mean, yeah, they kept track of who's legal and like the little nitpicky thing of like you know I think one of each team is in there, but then it makes sense that we had to get to the Bucks turning on. Red Dragon and, and vice versa and shit like that. Uh, well, not turning, but you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. I, also, I just don't like Luchasaurus either. I think he needs what? to decide whether he needs whether he wants to try and be a massive cruiserweight or a big man. And I really think he should just be a big man. Yeah, but then he's just like every other big man, though. Uh, not necessarily. You can you can change it up a little bit. He doesn't have to do like a hundred moves an hour. But if he does 100 moves an hour, then he's Luchasaurus. If he just becomes big man, then it's like, what What the fuck is Luchasaurus? He's Luchazilla. Luchazilla. You know? I don't know. I fucking love this match. This, this match was incredible. I fucking love it. Mm. Uh, coming up next is the Face of the Revolution ladder match featuring Powerhouse Hobbs, Orange Cassidy, uh, Keith Lee, uh, Ricky Starks. Uh, who else am I missing? Christian. Christian and Wardlow. Right there. I will say I, I like that um Wardlow was holding Hobbs and um Lee and Cassie tried to climb up on him and go for the ring. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. Um I love that camera shot of Keith Lee just rising up behind Christian. Like it was a fucking horror movie. You know, like Christian was standing in the corner waiting for it, and then Keith Lee just rises up behind him. And shit. That was that was great. Um, and the, the spot of the night, in my opinion, was, was Orange Cassidy skinning the cat of the ladder and then reaching for the ring again. That yeah. was, like, incredible. Fucking loved it. Uh, Hobbs had a nice know. suplex off the ladder. What are you going to say, Nick? Keith Lee tossed an orange. Yeah, G- yeah, that was pretty dope. Yeah, almost missing the people. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Ricky Starks. I usually don't give Ricky Starks all the credit, but he hit that spear through the ladder. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Taz had a line on commentary that fucking made me chuckle. Uh, Danhausen shows up in the match, and then he just pieces off, and like people are just like, oh, but people love Danhausen. And Taz's like, yeah, I get it. People love Danhausen. Very nice, very evil. I'm very pissed off. <laughs> 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 it cracked me up. That is a funny and, line. Uh, and we all witnessed the murder. We saw Wardlow kill Ricky Starks with that powerbomb. Rest in peace, Ricky Starks. Because, like, how is he not dead after that? Like, that, I mean, like, I just saw that man's neck break when that happened. Um, I would have probably given this four because, I, you know, I mean, come on. Six guys in a ladder match? Come on, it's bound to be somewhat fun, you know? But the reason I have to give it a three out of five is because I don't get – we talked about this in the group chat – I don't get how you hire somebody like Keith Lee and you come in with all this big fanfare. Yep. All right. And it's his third AEW match and he's going to lose. I mean, yeah, they did an okay job of writing him out of the match later on and such. And I get that Wardlow is over and he gets really over later, you know, but like, I just think you still saw him lose. Exactly. The same thing with Hobbs. Hobbs was not ready for this position. Hobbs, I thought Hobbs did match. pretty good in the match. I thought he well, that's be... fine, but he should not. Hobbs he didn't yeah. need to take a loss. That's true. I liked... He's too green for this. He's See, too I... new. 
the I gave it three and a half, but it was a lot. I, but the, the reason why I didn't give it higher is because Hobbs and Lee both couldn't afford the loss. I, I liked Hobbs how they wrote have... them out. However, you could have kept Keith Lee out and put somebody else in, and I would have been fine with like a Hobbs wing, like if Spears was in instead of. Keith Lee, but that's that's the same sort of thing you can be said about Wardlow winning. Wardlow, I think, would have been fine without the win. Um, uh, Keith Lee is the thing where why bring him in with all this fanfare and only have him lose in his yeah. third match, and you're going to write him out with Will Hobbs, who was the other one. I was like, fuck, like, damn, like, he could have won. You could have done a whole thing with him and Starks. Like, oh, like, I'm going to win, no, 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 and then Hobbs just fucking slugs him, and that's that. Like, it just... <sighs> yeah, I, mean, I, think, half. I think Hobbs could have took the loss here. He's green. I think he could have took the loss here, but I think Keith Lee should, should yeah, he should have been... He either should have not been in the match, or he should have won. Mm-hmm. I mean, Wardlow's, Wardlow's only loss was to CM Punk, and the way they made him lose to CM Punk was, you know, still made him look good. Mm-hmm. We don't even talk about that loss to CM Punk, and, and, you know, right now, you know. But I mean, other than that, it was still a fun match. I would have given it a four. I just didn't like how the the treatment of um, Keith Lee in that match. It was better than I expected it to be. I did like the. Oh, I didn't write this one down, but I did like how Wardlow and uh, Hobbs were like they're fighting over the ladder, and they just ripped it in half. Huh. That was cool. Shelby. Yeah. Oh boy. Oh boy. Uh the six man match with obvious cooperation and weak weapon shots. Um Keith Lee and Hobbs lost all their momentum. And unless they plan on putting the TNT title on Wardlow, this is a big waste of time. One out of five. Mm. I can see your reasoning with that though. Yeah. And I also I know you were going on about the the OC fucking ladder spot where he fucking yeah. skinned the cat on the ladder. If you were holding that ladder and you saw him do that, would you not drop that ladder so he fell straight on his ass? Well, yeah, but it's, yeah. Still, it's still a cool visual. It is a cool visual, but I mean, I don't tend to worry about OC winning a ladder match because he doesn't understand how to, like, actually climb a ladder. If you remember the first one that he was in. Yeah. Like, how do I do this? <laughs> yeah. What? That's what oh. I thought was funny when he was in that match. I was laughing at him. It's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Next match is for the TBS Championship. Jade Cargill defending against Ty Conti. Sammy Guevara is the lucky man. Um, I love the Mortal Kombat gear. Mortal Kombat gear was hot. Jade we Cargill's need- husband is a lucky man. We need more of uh, Ty Conti and Jade kissing. Hmm. That, that was a weird like start that. to the match. Yeah, that it was, was weird, really but strange. I, I could go for more of it. And what the fuck was that makeup that Ty Conti was going for? Yeah, it looked like shit. Yeah, I like Jade's. Uh, I liked Jade's guitarist at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, That's cool. Yeah, I think it was uh, who I forgot. I, I didn't write down who did it, but didn't somebody? Oh yeah, it was Jade. It was Jade who did three pump kicks in a row in the corner, mm. or was it Ty? I don't know. One of them. It was, two. Ty. it was Ty. Okay, whoever did it, it was pretty fucking cool. But uh, how the fuck is Anna Jay not dead after that kick from Jade Cargill? Jungle Boy Anna... is the lucky man. <laughs> Cause like fucking Jade Cargill just looked over at Anna Jay and just kicked the fucking like life yeah. out of her. Like holy fuck. And you want to talk about weak weapon shots, Shelby? Like fucking MJ. Oh, the chair shot! Oh, oh my yeah. god, this oh chair my god. shot was horrid. Yeah, this was yeah. a weak chair shot, man. Yeah. Like, oh my god. Yeah. Uh, nice splash by Jade. I thought this. I thought this match did what it needed to do. It was short. It was to the point. It, it didn't really fucking. I mean, I didn't like the chair shot. Mm-hmm. Uh, other than that, that was the only thing I was really like, eh, whatever, you know. But like, oh yeah, I enjoyed the match. I gave it three. I gave it three as well. Probably Jay Cargill's best match to date. I liked it. Not the worst, not the best weak chair shot that was unnecessary. Two out of five. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
All right. And for me, for some reason, the show just went downhill after this match. Oh. I, I, oh, oh. This next, next match, oh. Next up is CM Punk taking on Maxwell Jacob Friedman, aka MJF, in a dog collar match, which, uh, first thing I wrote, I, I, I have like three lines of notes. Damn. If you see like all the notes I wrote down for the tag team match in this one, it's just night and day. I did like to psych out with the music, you know, look in my eye, and then it's fucking MJF's music. Do, 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 that's pretty cool. That's um, like one of the first things that didn't really, if you think about it though, right? Like he's back there. Does he like tell them to put on CM Punk's music and they just put it on? Yeah. How does yeah. that work? It just, I guess. And then uh, CM Punk tells him, he's like, eat shit, Max. And then there was a eat shit, whoop, whoop, eat shit, whoop, yeah, whoop, champ. That. Which I kind of liked and hated it. At the same time, I was like, this is a stupid champ, but it's funny that it's getting over. <laughs> um, I like the, the shining wizard with a chain. And then after that, I'm just like, okay, this is fucking boring me to fucking tears. Like to the point where I wrote, why is this still going? This is way too long. Um, but I did like the official, I know he's been tweening for a while, but the official face turn of Warlow. That was pretty cool, man. Just something so simple. Just like, here's the ring. There you go. Yeah. And then just Peace. fucking pieces down. Everybody went nuts. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought the matches went on way too long. Uh, it was too slow. I thought, I mean, yes, there was brutality in this match. I mean, there was a lot of blood in this match. But, like, I just thought it went on for way too fucking long. I was bored out of my tear, uh, out of my skull for a while. Two and a half. Oof. Oof. I gave this one four. The only reason I didn't go higher than four is because there was too much fucking blood. I started to feel sick after a bit. I'm okay with a lot of blood and shit, but, like, fuck, this match went on way too fucking long. And it was, I mean, yeah, they did a couple cool chain spots here and there and such like that. But, like, I'm just like, why is it still going? Like, and then they had to pull out thumbtacks. Like, what fucking, I'm sorry. I'm pretty sure Valentine and Piper did not pull out thumbtacks in their match. They did not. They did not. Um, I will say. And then he completely misses the fucking tax. He gets all ass on it. (laughs) You know? Put a little ass on it. Like, people are praising this fucking match. It's so good. And I'm I'm sorry. I I don't know. Maybe I'm just fucking, maybe I am retarded. I just don't know it. But, like, (laughs) there was some decent stuff in there. But uh, two and a half, man. It just went on way too fucking long for me. Minus the tax. And as much as the Wardlow interference was good, I didn't really want to see Wardlow split yet. I still wanted to see him with MJF. Um, I thought this was probably one of the best matches on the show. And I think that this rivalry could go down as one of the greatest rivalries in AEW at to this point. Um, I also think that there's mileage to get another match out of this. However, with the finish and the way that it ended, I don't think they're going to. Um, but I'd really like to see them in a steel cage or something to that effect. Even like they lay their shit in. That's the big part of this match that I really enjoyed. When they fucking Irish whip somebody, they whip them into the fucking corner. They just fucking throw each other around. They were beating the piss out of each other. It was great. I gave it a four to five. How do you? Okay, please explain to me this. How come a match like this, you you give four out of five, but the latter match wasn't good enough for you, and that had a weapon base, a a weapon base quality to it. That had a weapon base quality. This was a gimmick base quality. This gimmick was they're tied together. They can't get away from each other. The only other thing I didn't like about this match is I thought they went on the outside a little bit too much. But there was actual work in this match. There was a story in this match. These two hate each other so much that they have to be tied together so that one of them can't get away and they can finally end this feud. Potentially. I still think that they should get more mileage out of it and get one more match. But I also I think, think I, if they were going to get one more match, I think MJF should have went over here. Yeah. I, I I think the, their first match was better than... I haven't actually seen that one, but I heard it's really good. I liked it way better than this. Yeah. And Not you figure a match like this would be up my fucking alley. I, yeah. was actually, I mean, I was looking forward to that. I was like, all right, dog collar match, okay, you know, let's, let's get it on. But then, like, once it, once it just became, like, too methodical. You know, mm-hmm. like, too much fucking, like, you know, not, I don't know how else to explain it, but it's just like, uh, what's the, what, what I'm looking for here? It, 
Imagine like a sandwich that was just mainly bread and not enough meat. That's what I was mainly getting from this. <laughs> I will say bread to bun or your meat to bun ratio. There you go. You I know, was it, very surprised at how much juice punk got right off the bat, though. That was fucking shocking. It was a lot was, of blood. Plus, it took me very long. It t- plus, it took a very long time for me to eat this sandwich. <laughs> like I'm it just was like, the well, longest this match fucking sure. end. You know? Yeah. Uh, God, I just it, 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 believe it or not, not my lowest ranked match of the night. Believe it or not. Oh, I really hope it's the one I'm thinking it is because fuck that match. I'm sure we'll get to it. Nick. Oh no, I gave the I gave it. Uh... I give it four. Oh, yeah, okay. All right, coming up next is Thunder Rosa challenging for the AEW Women's Championship against Britt Baker, D-M-D. And I like the new title. Adam Cole is a lucky man. (laughs) I wrote that. I wrote that. Like the new title belt because it does. It looks. I'm sorry. Like, I didn't like the original title. It was too small. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. The new. And the second, the second note I wrote was can't stop looking at Baker's ass. Adam Cole is a lucky man. Um, and also, like, Jamie Hayter and fucking Rebel were at mm. ringside, and Mercedes Martinez just recently turned face. Where the fuck was she? Didn't she have been out there? Oh, like, but Jamie Hayter's husband is a lucky man. Uh, but Mercedes Martinez should have been out there, at least, like, trying to combat some of this. These two, I mean, these two had the PWI 2021 match of the year, that lights out match. Mm-hmm. For some reason, these two, I, I don't know, maybe I'm not seeing it, but like these two were very sloppy. Mm-hmm. They were they just they just weren't clicking tonight for some reason. I thought I that in the, the beginning too, but I thought it did pick up near the end. I mean like Ty was better than this, and that's saying a lot. And like um I forgot who it was, but like one of them did like a rollover pin and like just spiked her right on her fucking head. I mean, like, it, it, everything just looked very sloppy. Uh, the Spirit of Rebel was good. I don't get how Thunder Rosa is able to kick out of a stomp with a belt compared to one without a belt. That didn't make any sense to me. This was the worst fucking match of the night. Oh, wow. One and a half. And I think wow. I, mean, I, I, I had two at first. I was like, fuck that. No, it's one and a half because these two just did not mix well tonight. I mean, the Lights Out match, I mean, I'm pretty sure Shelby would have a diff- different statement on the lights out match but like i like the lights out man that was pretty sick to watch but like this was just fucking horrid to watch it was watching a fucking car wreck i had it was what jim half. ross it was what jim ross calls bowling shoe ugly it was just I, it was it was horrid i had two and a half but now that i think about it there's so much that bothered me about this that shouldn't have including the fact that ty conti versus jay cargill was better so I've downgraded my rating from two and a half to two. Oh yeah, I totally agree that Jade and Ty was way better than this shit. Wait, I thought it was it was hard. It, it was hard for me to get into in the beginning, and I think it was just poor placement after the fucking uh, dog collar match. Um, mm. But especially you know once uh, Rosa kept getting screwed and kept getting screwed and kept getting screwed I started to get into it because I was like I want her to win now you know yeah and uh, you know uh, I think was it uh, ref was distracted and and Brit I can't remember how it ended like Brit hit the stomp on the belt yeah and then she kicks out of that and yeah then, yeah the ref was distracted again and then like she hits another stomp without a belt and somehow that keeps her down which, yeah, yeah. Um, so I could see your point on that, but it does make me want to see Rosa win the belt now. So I would like to see another match out of this, but I just I hope that that one's a little bit better than this one was. Yeah, because this this was just oh my god. I, I, I yeah. never thought I would if I would have went into this match thinking like oh if I would have went into the pay per view thinking this is gonna be the worst match on the card I I, I would have been like no way. Yeah. They're at least going to give us something good, but like maybe there was a report that maybe Thunder Rosa is injured, so that mm-hmm. could be why she was a little sloppy. Because like I don't know, it just seemed like some of the shit they were doing, like they just were not clicking well with each other. Yeah, you know? I mean it was almost like fucking Hogan Warrior Halloween Havoc bad man. Mm. This I, I just did not like it at all, and I'm a big Baker supporter. Um. Next match here. Oh, Jesus. 
I didn't write down a single fucking note for this match. God I, damn. I could have cared fucking less. Wow. But John Moxley taking on Brian Danielson. Somebody else. Fast in the night. Yeah, what? well. Going I don't know into it, I was like, like I'm it. not going to. Going into right, it, it's like, it. I can't over. see I'm this done. as. I can't see this as being anything but sloppy because the storyline hasn't made any fucking sense whatsoever. Yeah. And then I saw the match, and then I saw after the match, and I was marking out hard, and I was like, that match is fucking great. It like, was. It was a. It there was were another times fight. during that match. Yeah, it was another fight. There were times yeah. during that match. I thought that. You could, it, it looked almost like they were like, how do we top MJF and Punk? Yeah. Like, what can we do to top those two? And then fucking like, oh, like, yeah, let me see the headbutts and the fucking, they, and see, I say, I complained about the, I, I said there was too much blood in the dog collar, but that's because, yeah, there was going to be room for blood in that match. You knew there was going to be blood in that match. And there was a lot of blood in that but match, But there was too. too much blood. But yeah. then in this match, you don't, I don't team with anybody until I bleed with somebody. Like, And they kind of played that up. Brian didn't bleed too much. Mox, there's a, little, a lot of blood, but like not overboard. Like Not like I'm going to throw up. The the finish was great. Like the oh man, and then Regal could, afterward. I marked hard. I knew Regal was coming because I fucking knew what happened anyway before I watched it. But I marked fucking hard for Regal. I, I was more was entertained. I was more entertained by Regal coming out than I was with this match. You could sit somebody down who knew absolutely nothing four, about wrestling and had never four, heard it before, five, and you could convince four, four, them five, that this was real. That's how hard they were hitting each other. That's how believable what they were doing was. It was a fight. That was great. I rated it a four. I think I might have to go higher, too, because I was tempted to give it match of the night, but now that Nick said it, I think I will. Definitely four, match of the night. Match of the night. Fuck yeah. I don't want to do this podcast anymore. <laughs> <laughs> like, I could kind of forgive the Roman Reigns Goldberg thing, but mm. like, okay, I I gave it a two only for the fact that they're they're both talented performers, and they can perform well. It wasn't something that I was just like, oh, that looks shitty and that looked horrible and shit like that. I was just bored. I don't get how you could be. I just don't get it. Uh, yeah. I was just, I was not feeling the, the storyline is kind of dumb, and I think they're going to tag them together, which That's is going to be even stupider. But yeah, but if uh, Regal's managing and it's not just a tag team and it's stable, it could be fucking incredible. Oh yeah. man, you know, and I'd rather Regal's see them like, fight again. I'd if rather Regal, see them fight again. hold on a minute, hold on a minute. If Regal is the on on screen for for ROH, right? A fucking Danielson and Moxley team up in ROH, but not. Or they team up and need not in ROH. So they continue the fucking issue in ROH. And they still have an issue, but they're like a fucking tag team. Uh, it could be fucking amazing. I have high hopes for this now that Regal's involved. I have a fucking awe. I just think, yeah. them, as a, I just think them as a tag team and Regal as the manager would be good. You know, but I did, everything before Regal showing up, I'm just like, I am so not into this. Mark Hart and Regal. Oh, fuck you. Mark Taylor Hart. Fuck yeah. All right. Next match here. Uh, AHFO with Andrade, Matt Hardy, and Isaiah Cassidy. Oh, okay. Um, taking on Sammy Guevara, Sting, and Darby Allen. Uh, now, my the feed that I was watching on kind of messed up as I was watching, so I had to go to an alternate feed. So, like, when I went to that feed, yeah, I, it went, like, partially into the match. So, um, but why the fuck wasn't Quinn in this match? I thought Mark Quinn. I thought maybe, like, oh, maybe he's injured. But then he shows up at ringside and he's doing spots. So, I'm like, why the fuck? Why didn't you just do, like, Hardy in private party versus, or Andrade in private party versus these guys? I don't know. Or fuck it. I mean, yeah. like, they had, like, 17 people interfere. Why not make it a fucking six- or eight-man tag? 
You know? Why not just make it a bullshit everybody come out and fight tag? I mean, they did. Yeah, they um, did, didn't they? Yeah. Da, 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 da. I like the silly string over the barricade by Private Party. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, that fucking <laughs> that fucking uh, Spanish fly to the floor, and I say to the floor because them tables did not break. No, <laughs> that was insane. Um, Sting, fucking Sting, Sting, sixty-two years old, diving off a fucking balcony to a table. I mean, regardless how you feel about the whole match itself, three like, tables. That was fucking dope. Uh, or however many, still. I mean, and then it got I, up after. I was like, "Holy fuck!" Dude. Yeah. Um, now I know we've had this argument before about like Darby Allen's fucking coffin drop that finish well, shit. That was fucking awesome. How was it awesome? He missed, missed like ninety eight percent of it. Still, he got like the tip the of his head on Hardy. The sequence was great. I gave this yeah, match three and a half. Great, but like the actual coffin drop, he missed like ninety eight percent of it. <laughs> Three and a half. I actually really enjoyed this. It, this not, turned out so better. Much. It turned out better to me than uh, I watched the House of Black versus Redbeard Pack. I caught the end of that. Yeah, I caught Kenta. the end of that. That was pretty good. I was really <clears throat> kind of just. I was annoyed by the fact that Redbeard still didn't look like he fit in, and like leading up to the end, like it was just like fuck. Like this was better than that. In which I was surprised by. You know, fucking Sting. Oh, wow. That, that was the highlight of that match with Sting. They like, pulled through that fucking I mean, 62 table. years old. I mean, he didn't wow. have to. He never, like uh, Brian Zane said it on his YouTube channel. Like, he never had to do it. He didn't have to do it now, but he did it. And it was, yeah. it was cool to see. Uh, I also gave it a three and a half. But, oh, what's that I hear? I hear seething. <laughs> Did they, at any point, mention that this was no DQ? No, I I, I figured that was going to be your nitpicky thing because I they they mentioned it was tornado tag. But they, <laughs> they never did. mentioned that it was like oh you can go anywhere. But to be fair, they never tried to make a pinfall anywhere else but the ring. No. Oh, I just not my thing. I hated it. I skipped a lot of it because I was bored and just chaos and no. Um, That's how I felt during Moxley and fucking Danielson minus the skipping. Yeah. Uh, bullshit. Zero out of five. Oh, my God. Yeah. Worst uh, match of the night. No, fucking Rosa and Baker needed some yeah. work there, man. Yeah. All right. In the main event, Adam versus Adam. Who do you got? Let's Adam. go, Adam. <laughs> um, but Adam Cole... A.K.A. Master Chief. That was fucking stupid. Yeah, it was. Take it on Hangman Adam Page, A.K.A. Confetti. His <laughs> confetti was fucking stupid, too. And I figure it was a nod to ROH, but that was fucking stupid. He looked fucking stupid. This match was boring. It should have been way better. Fuck this match. Right result, though. Three stars. That's all I have to say about um, it. Um... Adam Cole didn't know where the hard camera was. I thought that was funny to do his little boom thing. <laughs> like he was facing the wrong side. And you can tell him, turn the other way, you know. Yeah. Boom. And he did it right on time. You got to give him that one. You can tell whoever was probably trying to tell him, like, wrong camera. He did it right on time. I got to give him that much at least. Um, like Adam Cole did this, um, like, kind of like a, like a backstabber type of thing, but he used, like, one knee, and he used it on Adam Cole's, or Adam Page's neck. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, hell of a powerbomb moonsault combo by Page. That was good. And, <laughs> again, it was another commentary chuckle here, but, like, uh, Excalibur calls a Liger bomb. And JR oh, yeah. Was like, yeah, I was like, what's the difference between a Liger Bomb and a Power Bomb and Excalibur with not even missing a beat? He was like, well, a Liger Bomb, you put your feet over the shoulder so you can get a pinfall. And JR was like, all right, right on. <laughs> hey, you yeah, know why no, he did that, that though? Good. You know why he did that, though? Why? It's so that because not everybody who watches, they, you would hope that not everybody that watches has seen everything in Japan and everywhere else. You got to explain the difference between a regular Power Bomb and 
a sit out power bomb. You and I know that, but I know, but like I could tell that like Jr. Yeah. did it. And it was just like yeah. like thought he was gonna throw Excalibur off, and Excalibur not missing a beat, yeah. man. Just like oh yeah, you put your feet over the leg, and Jr. just stunned like he <laughs> like he didn't think he was gonna have the answer. He was just like <laughs> okay, fair enough. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> that made me yeah. Um, that was a good this, line. I think this match featured the third tombstone of the night. And JR uh, made a great call on commentary then. When a tombstone doesn't finish the match, there's a problem. Yes, there yeah, is. Yeah. They're killing the tombstone. Yeah. You're oh, killing yeah. the tombstone. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I had a question about somebody still being all elite, and it was answered during this match because the Dark Order came out, and good old Colt Cabana was there. So didn't know he was still elite. Um, Overall, I thought it was a fun match. Uh, Really, I mean, you know, I, I, I mean, I think, if Adam Cole would have won, I wouldn't have been upset. Yeah, you know? I wouldn't have been upset, but I think Paige was the right winner. Like, I'm not over Paige yet. Like, uh, you know, like I, you know, I've said it once, I've said it a million times. I think he should have been the first AEW World Champion, man. That's mm-hmm. just me. Um, but uh, you know, I did have three point five, but I think I'm gonna go down to a three just because there's not a lot of memorable stuff in this match. Mm. You know, so I'm gonna go down to a three on this one. Yeah, I can do the same. Um, it was better than I expected. And, uh, yeah, that's all I really have to say. <laughs> so, overall, what are we giving AEW Revolution? 8.5. I gave it an 8. I wrote down 6, but... That's only for fucking mainly like I'm mainly pissed off with, with Baker and Rosa and how bored I was during Mox and fucking Danielson. Um, all the rest of the matches I thought were somewhat, at least somewhat entertainable. I mean, even though I wasn't a big fan of the dog collar match, uh, fuck it, six and a half. I'll do six and a half. That's what I get. I mean, I'm sorry. I I, I don't see it sometimes you know all right so that was aew revolution um when's the next pay-per-view wrestlemania isn't it i think so yeah yeah when is wrestlemania this year april second and third april first and second first and second are you sure oh what about um are we doing the nxt one um that's WrestleMania week. We did it last year. Did we? Not that I really want to, but yeah. I think we just kind of mentioned it in passing, though. No, I know what it was. Nick and I watched it because we thought it was part of it, and then you were like, yeah, no, we weren't supposed to watch that. I remember. Yeah. That's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's what it was. I don't know. I don't remember. Either way, well, okay, we're not going to do Stand and Deliver then. Fuck that. Yeah, we are. No, fuck you. Why? <laughs> well, NXT sucks. although I will just say on a breaking NXT note. You want to try that again uh, there, Mr. Roboto? Let's make sure. On a breaking NXT news note. Dolph from Ziggler's tonight's NXT, NXT roadblock, there is Dolph a new Ziggler. NXT champion. Oh, Oh, Dolph this... Ziggler is the NXT champion. What? Um, what the from fuck? From what I'm, let me just make sure I'm reading it right. But yeah, let me. Uh, There's no way they fucked up Braun Breaker. There's no way. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything. So about yeah, um, Dolph Ziggler is the new NXT champion. So no, as I look here, Champa hits Willow's bell. On in the ring and goes for the fairy tale ending, but Ziggler cuts him off for a close two count. Ziggler can't believe it. Champa tosses Ziggler. Champa charges for what I need Braun, but Rude trolls Braun out of, into the floor. Ziggler takes advantage with a super kick and pins Champa for the win. Winner and new NXT champion Dolph Ziggler. Wow. Dolph Ziggler is the NXT champion. Oh, can't be any worse, can it? At least it's somebody like comparable and somebody who deserves some sort of a quote unquote world title run. I won't disagree with Mm -hmm. that, but like they just fucked the dog on Braun Breaker. 
They want to. They want to fucking. Good Apollo, shit, pal. They want to Apollo Cruz him, man. They want to bring him up to the roster now. Dolph Pin. They could have done it with the belt. Though. Yeah, look how well that worked for Carrion. Dolph yeah. Pin Champa worked well for Kevin. The yeah. story is Dolph pin Chapa. Obviously, Breaker's gonna pin Dolph at fucking stand and deliver. But mm. Dolph Ziggler is the new NXT champion. Hmm. Interesting. I'm fucking right. depressed now. <laughs> I'm fucking depressed. Did I depress you? Why yeah, I did. But the signers in the Hall of Fame. Scott Snyder's Hall of Fame speech is gonna right. be fucking. Incredible. You know what? You know what? The only way they can redeem this is by putting Braun Breaker into a triple threat match with Lesnar and Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. Let the only way they can redeem this is that. by bringing back the Velveteen Dream. Well, that's not happening. Let's be Shut honest. Shut up! I can dream! <laughs> you can dream, all right. Uh, all right. So let's get into impromptu promo. But before we get into impromptu promo, we got to give a shout out to uh, MoviesRUSA.net which is a great um, website that uh, features hard-to-find movies and TV shows, and they put them all on Blu-ray for you. They do do DVD by special request. And you can head on over there and use our checkout code three-way, the word, not the number. Use checkout code three-way, and you can save 50% on your entire purchase. I mean, like, uh, where else are you going to find, like, a complete Blu-ray set of Legend of the Hidden Temple, the game show? Nowhere. But movies are USA.net. Where else are you gonna find Jerry Springer's uh ill fated game show baggage on Blu-ray? Movies are baggage. Did you really? I thought it was just yeah, one of those ones really that it was just it. like it was one of those ones where like if it's on, I'll watch it, but it's not something I'm like clamoring to watch. You know? But uh but you can watch an entire series of baggage on Blu-ray. At moviesrusa.net, all you gotta do is, uh, you know, go on over there, use the checkout code through it, save yourself fifty percent on it, and um, many uh, over two thousand other titles available. So head on over to moviesrusa.net today. Get you a TV show, get you a movie. I mean, you can get over there and get Scream Five. You can get Spider Man Far From Home or No Way Home or I'm Lost at Home. I don't know whatever the fuck it's called. Um, <laughs> Lost in the bathroom, whatever it's called, you know. Um, yeah, so head on over to moviesrusa.net. Use checkout code three ways to fifty percent. <clears throat> All right, let's do impromptu promo. I'm just gonna carry over the last list we did. Um, hopefully, we're better. Uh, <laughs> so, Very good, miss. So uh, I, I uh, Nick, I wouldn't suggest that you pick the ones because it'd be the same thing again. Yeah, no. Um, I'll go first, but I'll take right. a nice roll. Uh, ten. So you're going to be broken, Matt Hardy, but he's a landscaper. Yeah. And you're going against six. <laughs> you're broken, Matt Hardy, but he's a landscaper, and you're going against Cameron Grimes for the rights of undisputed error. Get in the character. Hold on. Ah, Cameron Grimes. I am broken, Matt Hardy. I have the mower of lawns and the flower of snow, or the blower of snows, <laughs> and the the. I will have. I fucking can't do it. The fucking kid. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I am seeing some chinks in the armor there, buddy. Yeah. Wonderful something, something. Your beard sucks. I got nothing. This one. I fucking got nothing. I thought. I'm sorry, but if I saw Matt Hardy give a promo where he just broke character and was just like, wonderful something, something, your beard sucks, I'd I'd laugh my ass off and tell everybody it was the best promo I've ever fucking watched. (laughs) Oh, setting the bar really low. I I like that. I like that. All right, Shelby, here we go. Six. So you're going to be Jeff Hardy, but he is increasingly getting higher and higher. Uh, and you're going to be going against six. Oh, we just did six. Just did six. 
four. Okay. You're Jeff Hardy, but he is increasingly getting higher and higher, and you're going against Hornswoggle and We LC. How to do a Jeff Hardy voice? That's a weird voice. <clears throat> or Hornswoggle. Oh. Jeff Hart, are you Jeff Hardy or Gold Dust? What the hell? Yeah. <laughs> Is that better? Yeah. Horn Swoggle. Tonight, we get to. Climb the wee little ladder to the top and go. All the way up to what? 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 What was I talking about again? Hornswoggle. That's what a hornswoggle. Hornswoggle. <laughs> I'll see you tonight, Hornswoggle. <laughs> That's a man who just gave up halfway. <laughs> All right, let's see what I get here. Uh, Save this segment. <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> Eight. Okay, I'm Matt Hardy again, but halfway through, I find out Lita cheated on me. Um, and I'm going against... Seven. I'm going against Scott Steiner on a math exam. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, hopefully I should be. I'm V1 Scott Steiner. We're going to enter the math room today. I don't know why he has an accent for some reason. <laughs> we're going to enter the math room today, man. I know, right? Yeah, I don't know why. But we're going to enter the math room. And your Scott Steiner math is not going to save you. I'm going to have the best math exam. There. Hold on, I got to text it. What do you mean, Adam? Adam and... Yeah. And and you know and you we're gonna take that math exam and we're, we're gonna <laughs> I can't she left me man she left me she's with Adam now and whatever you want to call him, I don't know I don't even care about the math anymore. I have a 50% chance of a broken heart. <laughs> and it's broken. I'm broken. Broken. I'm broken. Yeah. I'm broken. All right. That's all I got. Poor old fat hardy. I know. Yeah, that got dark pretty quick there. Huh. All right. All right. And Nick, what is your fact of the week? I didn't give it away this week. Thank God. All right. So my fact of the week. The anonymous Raw general manager uh, was originally planned to be Kevin Nash. Now, the way this would have worked is that because he was under TNA contract at the time, the storyline would have played out where that Kevin Nash had to be anonymous because he was under TNA contract. So he was fucking around with paparazzi productions while running Raw and evidently, of course, they scrapped it in favor of Hornswoggle eventually becoming the anonymous raw general manager huh well yeah. and now we know that hornswoggle was the better option yeah all right and that was our fact of the week there and now we're going to get to our questions which we actually have we have write-in questions we have like oh god we have so many questions so let's see the write-in questions first these are from my friend erica here yeah. i actually had to write them down when i was in live one night uh, so, uh, what do you like most about yourself? She wants to know. What do you like the most about yourself? I lived after being run over from a car. <laughs> that is pretty impressive. Tenacity. <laughs> Good. Yeah. yeah. I guess tenacity, tenacity and will to live. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, I'm generally told I'm a hard worker and I do believe it. So I'll say that. Um, I don't even think I have a good sense of humor. Mm. You know, to a degree. Why'd you laugh when I said that? 
I said yeah, uh, it's more of an uh, oh, oh, yeah, okay. not a ha. I mean, because yeah. like, I, I I admit that sometimes like some somebody can take a joke too far with me and I'll fucking lose my shit. But like you know. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I mean, like, I'd probably say, like, 98% of the time, you know, I like to think that I'm pretty funny, you know? Um, this is a funny question. Um, are you a silver accessories or a gold accessories bitch? What? Yeah, that's that's how she phrased it. Are you a silver accessories or a gold accessories bitch? I like, like my silver, yo. You like silver? I'd, like probably talk- wear, I'd probably wear gold if I if I, if I I had to pick. I mean, I have like a silver watch, so I'll go with silver. <laughs> okay. Um, and this this is the beauty of this being a written down one. Y'all couldn't go to like the 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 video and prepare for this one because I don't I don't think y'all would have been ever been prepared for this one. But um, her question is, uh, if you all circle jerked, who's finishing first? <laughs> I do not actually know. I don't know either. It depends because, like, like, probably, yeah, probably none of us. Yeah, more than likely. I was just standing there, just like, are we really going to do this? You know what the key is? You got to keep eye contact. Six no, it, hours no, go by. Worse. So, what, you just want to look hours down? Six go by, we're just standing there, like. Are we starting to okay, man, I guess it'd be bleeding. Shelby because Shelby has a plan. <laughs> okay, I guess that's my I'm just gonna weird it. you guys out so you stop. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I guess Shelby would be crazy, yeah, because that's, just, wow. that's what I told her too. I was just like, oh man, this would be great because like they don't get to prepare for this one. <laughs> so, wow. Out here. Oh, and Jackie also has some questions. I have to go to the messenger for that one. Um, what was your first concert, Nick? This should be a good one. Uh, Canadian band called the Moffats, uh, July 2nd, 1998. And 99, sorry, 99. I think it was Motley Crue, huh. the earliest one I remember, anyway. Uh, my first concert, with New Kids on the Block, baby. And not the 1990s version either. No, baby, the 2008 reunion tour. I think hmm. about you in the sun. Oh yeah, that's the na 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 na. Um, Jackie's second question is, what is your dream concert? Tom Waits. Uh, I've seen a lot, so I would say at this point Fleetwood Mac, but with Lindsey Buckingham and not the dude from Crowded House. Even though it's two entirely different fucking styles of music that they do, I would love to see the Wallflowers open for Dead by April. <laughs> that would be weird. <laughs> That'd be Just really like, weird. like we uh, like one hella <laughs> and fucking Dead by April comes on like fucking <laughs> angels. Okay. Um, and three. What was your favorite concert you saw? Daddy Long Legs. <sighs> That was a bar show, but I'm going to count it as a concert. Because I think um, if you count only concerts, Motley Crue is the only one I've ever been to. Fuck. Oh, I love fuck. <laughs> good Such a good concert. Good group. I, yeah, good group. Yeah. Shelby's the most experienced with this question, by the way. I mean, not Shelby. I'm sorry, Nick. No, I was going to say. Are you fucking Canadian? I see, this like is that. really hard to fucking answer this because I've been. Oh, fuck. Oh, you know who I'll throw it as a good shout, though? Have you ever heard of the WrestleManiacs? No. Yes. Oh, my God. They do wrestling themes. It's fucking hilarious. Um, do they do Great Kali? Uh, they don't do Great Kali. They do mostly like 80s, 90s stuff. Damn. Like they did Vince McMahon's and Hulk Hogan's, and it was really cool. I stood front row at that show. Of course. Yeah, well, I was the only one. Uh, I, I went by favorite myself. So. so probably... Because i got to think about the ones I can remember. <laughs> um, uh, you know, I'll Same. say... I, I'm going to say Red Hot Chili Peppers. Red Hot Chili Peppers. Fucking... Anthony Kiedis was singing Landon. No, no, Van Halen. 
fucking Eddie Van Halen played a 21 minute guitar solo. He's fucking laying down playing guitar and shit. Yeah, Van Halen was good. <laughs> cool and the gang opened. Yeah. Cool and the gang opened for Van Halen? Fuck yeah. That's kind of like Wallflowers opening for Dead by April there. Cool and the nah, gang opened quite. for Van not Halen quite. and it was incredible. Oh, no, I it can't was imagine. Incredible. I can't imagine listening to, uh, you know, celebrate then, good right times. Come on, the then devil. going right into fucking, you know, Jump. Danny California. No, he Which said Van Halen, was... not Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yeah. So oh, my bad. When the okay, gang still. Celebrate yeah. good times. Come on, run it with the devil. Yeah, I know, it's like <laughs> a combo to me there, you know? It was incredible. They're kind yes. of like same era, though, I suppose, right? Yeah, same era, but like two cool entirely different. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Andrew says, can confirm pineapple on a burger is excellent. Fuck Gross. yeah. Okay. And Andrew asks, I'm sure you guys will open the show talking about this, but do you, but do you think Tony buying ROH is a good thing in a sense that it allows for more opportunities? As long as he doesn't blow his load and it's it's like a developmental system, I think it'll be good. More uh, opportunities in what way? Because, I mean, somebody else could have bought it that wasn't Tony Khan, and then there'd be, like, three viable promotions uh, that, uh, well, I don't, other than Tony Khan or Vince McMahon, that, like, could have made it another viable com- promotion. There would have been three viable promotions. Because as much as I like the AWA, I mean, they're not even remotely similar to the same level right like there's just nobody else in north america that is right now other than those two yeah uh would you like to see the would you like to see him keep them selected or and expansive rosters right would you like to see him keep them selected i think you need separate separate okay thank you yeah a separate 100 percent. yeah i'd like to see them be told two totally different companies and in a sense if that's you know viable and i think they could do like a quote-unquote survivor series type of pay-per-view where like you know maybe once a year do roh versus aew yeah you know super shows too yeah they have like the titles and stuff yeah there you go something like that um or would it be a good nxt type of farm system we answer that or would it be like a raw and smackdown dynamic nah no okay um Andrew says, rate your excitement and anticipation level for WrestleMania. One being the lowest with your dick being inverted and disappearing into your gut. And ten being your tits are totally jacked and shooting lasers. Five. No. Four. I just can't. Uh. Six. Yeah, I think I'll go six. Just because, I mean, you have... I mean, I'm disappointed that Knoxville and Zayn is no longer for the title. Um, I mean, I knew Knoxville wasn't going to win, but it's still, it'd be nice to see Johnny Knoxville compete for the Intercontinental Championship, you know? Um, I think Logan Paul is going to steal the show. People aren't going to fucking... They found Johnny last year. Yeah, I think yeah, I think that's where it's going to be. But, like, I, I still think people are going to shit on it. Regard- that match, you, you yeah. could have a five... He could pull out a five-star match out of his ass at WrestleMania, and somehow they're going to shit on it still. You know, um, so yeah, I'd, I'd say six. Um, how are the tacos in Canada? Good Mexican up north or not so much? Very I good. Don't. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Sure, good. Very good hole in the wall places, more or less. I mean, Taco Bell's Taco Bell up here, but um, no, there's good Mexican. Every city I've lived in in Ontario. Well, I mean, that's good Mexican right there, Taco Bell. Yeah, <laughs> it's fast food. Man. They have all the stuff there. They have tacos, they have burritos, they have chalupas. Made from a bat. A very a Sometimes it doesn't make me poop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Andrew wants to know, favorite Doritos flavor? Zesty. Uh, Canadian, we don't know what that is. <laughs> What's Zesty? What, what the fuck is Zesty that? Zesty Morton. Uh, it's, it's okay, like adding a, more words to it doesn't explain. It's like a, a sharp <laughs> cheddar, I guess. Do you guys have sweet chili heat? We do. Okay, oh, sweet chili heat. Then. Too. I love yeah. this. Mine sweet is blazing buffalo ranch, but they only come out like once every fucking two fiscal years and shit. 
Uh, but like out of the normal flavors, I guess, uh, yeah, Cool Ranch. Mm. Uh, favorite Mountain Dew flavor? Baja Blast. I don't really drink Mountain Dew, so I'll just say like normal. Uh, I'd probably say, oh, shit. I don't know. Mountain Dew has like 47 different flavors and they don't come out with any di- diet varieties. I, I think I think he that's why he wrote this question. He just wanted me to go into my spiel about fucking Mountain Dew and how much I hate him. Uh, <laughs> but if I had to pick a favorite, uh, Diet Code Red when I can find it. I don't think they I think they stopped making it recently. Uh, favorite energy drink or coffee? I drink coffee. The best part of waking up is Folgers in your cup. I uh, I buy the McDonald's stuff in the uh, tin. Although if I splurge, I'll go with uh, Van Houten or like uh, Cowboy Coffee. Um, not really a coffee drinker. I'm an energy drink guy. And uh, favorite energy drink uh, right now? I've been really drink. I've been really liking the new Peach Monster they came out with. That's the one. It's not my favorite, but that's the one I'm enjoying the most right now. Um, any interest in the new Batman movie? Yes. No. Maybe. <laughs> good. That's good. I don't know if you you repeat the <laughs> question. You're not the boss of me now. Um, no, I was actually going to go see it this weekend, but like uh, I had to leave the mall by like a certain time. So I was just like, fuck, if I go see it, it's going to be like nine o'clock because it was like it's like a three hour fucking movie. Jesus. Uh, yeah, it's, but they say you don't feel it. You know, it's not like you know, it's, you know, it's not like Brian mm. Danielson and John Moxley where you feel that. You know, um, I mean, I wouldn't mind seeing it, but you know, uh, Jason wants to know which suicide, uh, which Suicide Squad movie did you like better? The one with uh, I haven't seen the second one, uh, so I can't really answer that. I can't even remember if I saw the first one. I'm pretty sure I did. I loved both of them. Um, and also, who? What's your favorite rap music artist? Use a B fight, a hostile taker. I tell you to your face, you ain't shit but a faker. Tupac. <laughs> I was down with Tupac for a while. Uh, I'm just gonna say Eminem because I'm not sure if the other guys really rap, but I do like that handsome devil who's very rappy. That who? That handsome devil. Oh. Mm. Um. South Tyler Park Creator. Mexican. <laughs> That's my favorite rapper. South Park Mexican. Fair enough. Uh, and uh, good old Josh. Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shelby's ready. <laughs> Although they're kind of tame okay. this week. Ah. Uh, yeah. Normal questions. If Russia attacks, if Russia attacks everyone, what will you? What will you three do? I'm going to go to Shelby's house and get in his truck and drive north. <laughs> yeah, that's my answer, too. I'm going to Shelby's and then hopping in his truck. Fuck it. Yeah. We have yeah. to save your sister. Come on. <laughs> I don't think I need to answer. <laughs> you guys know. Uh, question two. Uh, 90s pop band you three wish would make a comeback. All for one. Ace of base. I'm not really a pop guy. Bernie and Ladies count? Yeah. Okay. Vanga Boys. With them. Vanga Boys. The Vanga Boys are coming. Du, 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 du. New York and San Francisco. So, yeah. Um, a movie you all loved as a child. Good burger. Jerk my cum crown and call me white. That's a movie? <laughs> What? <laughs> um, small soldiers. Debbie does Dallas. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, uh, a sand, the Sandlot. I still like <laughs> it, but like as a kid, you man, throw I'm like a kid. girl. You know, um, your go-to app. I don't know if he means like application or appetizer. Spotify. Yeah. Or garlic bread, I guess. 
It's an appetizer. <laughs> Spanish fire down. garlic bread, I guess. <laughs> um, it's, oh, my go to app. God, I'm always on Facebook scrolling shit. So I guess Facebook or um, chicken tenders for appetizer. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, your go to coffee, tea, or soda? I don't think I need to answer that one. <laughs> Ooh, coffee or tea, but uh, you know what? I'll go tea. I've been, I've been big into tea lately. I'll go tea. Nick? Coffee. Coffee. I don't think I need to answer this. Everybody who knows me knows this so, answer. Yeah. yeah. There you go. All right. And now the odd questions, of course. Here we go. <laughs> Have you or a girlfriend ever got so drunk that you pooped in the shower? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Um, Why a girlfriend specifically? (laughs) (laughs) Um, Have you ever got sexual with a partner in a holy place? No. No. You could have to think. (laughs) Like, Shelby was just like, no. I did have to think. No. (laughs) No, never a holy place. Uh, Did your partner ever poop accidentally during anal? No, no. She would have to let never... me. She would have to let me do anal first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the only way to stop Vladimir Putin was to drink a gallon of jizz. Would you? Well, it looks like he's coming to America, buddy. Yeah, I was gonna say. I'm coming pretty sure. To yeah. America. <laughs> Quite literally, as a matter of fact. Yeah. Coming. Um, and this the last one here. Who would look better in makeup? Artist. I make up on. What's up? TV, son. Yeah. What are you babbling about? Artist. <laughs> yeah, me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So that was our final question there. That brings us to the vintage pick of the week, uh, which is usually a segment, a promo, a show, a match, something that we think you should go out and then find it and watch it. Uh, so, Nick, what's your vintage pick of the week this week? From Starcade 1983, as directed by CM Punk, as the build up for the dog collar match. Fucking Puck versus Valentine, dog collar, Starcade 83. Fuck yeah. Well, yeah. this is a first. Same vintage pick? Same vintage pick. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I literally just watched it again uh, before we got on tonight, thinking, I was like, I, w- I want to see that match again. It's a good match. It is a good mm-hmm. match. It is a good match. Well, yeah. my my vintage picture week does involve a lot of blood. Um, I don't remember what episode of Raw it's from, but there's a promo that Ric Flair gives where he's calling out Triple H, and, uh, and he oh. starts beating the fucking shit out of his own head. Yeah, doesn't he have a cut on his head after yeah, Triple H and beat like, the piss yeah. out of him the week before? Yeah, it starts yeah. bleeding profusely, yeah. and he just keeps calling Triple H out like, "Get out of here." Get out of here now! And yeah. Like, blood's flying. It's like he's wearing a white shirt on top of all that. Yeah. You know, yeah. oh my God, that showed up on my Facebook feed the other day, and I was like, God, I miss this promo. This was That's, good. there's a lot of flair out there that is like just sad, depressing flair where he's like not in his old self, but that is like an example of when he was in like his older years and he was good. Like that was a great promo. Yeah, that promo. He was just constantly yeah. like, get out of here! Get- yeah. Beating himself in the head, blood shooting, yeah. fucking wiping all over his white shirt. Oh, yeah. God. I, I got a final episode of Raw, that is. But I'm pretty sure if you type in Ric Flair bleeding promo somewhere, I'm pretty sure it'll pop up there. Yeah. <laughs> so, there's the bell, so we know what that means. That signifies the end of the three-way dance wrestling podcast. Uh, we did have, I, I've been pimping it out all week, but we did have something planned for next week. But Shelby went a little dingy on it, and... <laughs> Don't think that's going to get out the next week. But I apologize. hopefully, hopefully my idea, if Shelby can't get it together in six days, hopefully my idea will get there. We're actually going to be, if, if we get Shelby's idea, you'll see it next week. I don't want to spoil what that is. But my idea, if we get it, I'm actually going to like share screen. You guys will, well, you guys will actually see it, the viewers at home. But like me, Shelby, and Nick, I'm going to do a virtual Royal Rumble with some characters and we're just going to fucking just kind of sit back, watch and relax, you know, commentate, whatever. Um, 
We'll see how that goes via the magic of wrestling empire, the game there. So that, that should be kind of fun, especially with like all the weird wacky characters they have and the weird shit that they do in the game. It's just fucking sweet. We'll watch a good old Royal rumble. See who wins it. And I'll, we'll even put us in it. Hell yeah. Hell, if you want to be in it, let me know. This will let yeah. me know if you actually listen to the show. If you want to be in the rumble, let me know. And we'll see if you can actually beat one of us. That's how the Royal Rumble works. You just got to say that you're going to be in yeah, the Royal Rumble. There you go. That's right. what I, I declare that I'm in the Rumble. Yeah. Right. So that will be next week, uh, hopefully, if if Shelby doesn't have his shit together. And then if he's done, then um, uh, we'll move it to another time. Because it's, it's and a I'll be fired. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, we'll move it to another time, and hopefully we can get it together. Uh, there's like books and shit involved, so it's 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 you know we don't read. Um, yeah. What's so, reading? Yeah. I do. I know. Well, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Mister fucking Nancy Drew over here. Um, <laughs> Hardy boys and shit. So, mm-hmm. all right for Nick and Shelby. I am the artist version one. Until next week, be breezy, guys. <laughs>